Isaiah chapter 21. Ecclesiastes, the 21st book of the Bible. And we're looking at uh, the attack on Babylon. And a prophecy of the attack on Babylon through the, through the tribulation. But we're going to look at the attack on Babylon be during um, Daniel's time. Then we're going to look at, uh, real quick, uh, uh, Edom. And then we're going to look at Arabia. Looking at prophecy that comes to be and will be coming to be. It says, the burden of the desert of the sea. That sea would be the Mediterranean Sea. As whirlwinds, uh, twisters, tornadoes, powerful windstorms in the south pass through, and they're destructive. So it cometh from the desert, from the terrible land. And this would be the Medes and the Persians. A grievous vision is declared unto me, Isaiah. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously. Now you can't expect good from bad. You can't expect an evil tree to produce good fruit. And the spoiler spoils. Go up to Elam, besiege, O media. That's the Medes and the Persians. All the sign, you know what a sign is. <sighs> Therefore have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain, agony. Pains have taken hold upon me. As the pangs of a woman that travails, and that, that travailing of a woman is quite frequent in the Bible, and it shows the time of Jacob's trouble, agony. It's a woman about to give birth to a child. I was bowed down, pain, at the hearing of it, just to, this to hear. I was dismayed at the scene of it. Now Isaiah is not going to see it. My heart panted. Fearfulness affrighted me. The night of my pleasure has turned unto fear unto me. That's Belsizer. That party, that handwriting on the wall was at night. Promoted Daniel. Good night, Daniel. Have a good day. And overnight, the Medes and the Persians came in and destroyed Babylon. Overnight, Babylon was destroyed. The Babylon of Daniel, well, Jeremiah through Daniel. Prepare the table. Well, that's interesting. Prepare the table. That's where Belsizer was last read. Let's see. Wait a minute. Daniel, you stay there. Let me see if I get the date. Daniel. I'm in Ezekiel. Daniel. My page is sticking together. All right. 538 B.C. This is 714 BC, almost 200 years. How's that? Let's try your horoscope to do something like that 200 years. Prepare the table. Watch in the watchtower. They weren't watching in the watchtower in Babylon. Because the enemy came and 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 changed the course of the river. <laughs> And came under the city. Eat. Drink. That's what Belshazzar was doing. Arise. <laughs> What's the handwriting on the wall? Everybody check this out. 
calling Daniel. He princes. He had every all the royalty, all his wives, and anoint the shield. And that was what they did with the shield. It's anointing the shields, cleaning the shield, getting ready for battle. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, a man to watch out. Look out for the people, look out for the city. Let him declare what he seeth. Go up to your tower, what do you see? Now, this is not the Jehovah Witnesses and their watchtower crap. Those are false witnesses. They're in a cult. They don't believe the Bible. They got their own Bible. What's he see? He says, I see a chariot with a couple of horsemen. A chariot of asses, donkeys, a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heat. I see chariots coming. And he cried, a lion. That's an enemy. My Lord, I stand continually upon the watch tower, not the Jehovah Witnesses, in the daytime. And I am set in my ward whole nights. Ward is where he is his living quarters. Somebody else would be on, on the watchtower. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, now this is found in Revelation 14 and Revelation 18, the Babylon in the, in the tribulation period. This will be the Babylon in Daniel's time. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the graven images of her gods. That's tribulation period. You know the images and the idolatry and the fallen gods of Babylon have not fallen? And you can find them in churches today. You can find them in the Catholic church. You can find them in the Protestant church. And you can find them in the Baptist church. The gods and the images of Babylon are not fallen yet. They will in the tribulation period. The gods of the Babylonians, the gods of the Egyptians, the gods of the Romans are still alive and well, though they be dead in stone and metal and wood and plastic. Her gods, small G-O-D-S, he has broken onto the ground. That'd be the Lord Jesus Christ doing that. Oh, my threshing. Now we're going to look into a threshing floor, which is a place of liking in the Bible of judgment. And the corn of my floor, and that corn is wheat and barley, not the corn of America. That which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. That's what Isaiah said, listen, the God of Israel, I declare what God told, what told me, I declare it to you. Babylon's going to fall during Daniel's time, and the Babylon's going to fall under the Antichrist time. Uh, verses uh, 11 and 12, Edom. The burden of Duma. He called to me out of Seir, that's Edom, south of the Dead Sea. Watchmen, what of the night? Watchmen, what of the night? And what Edom is doing is they're assassin. They're ridiculing Isaiah. They're mocking him. Come on, what is the word of the Lord? Come on, preacher. When's it going to happen? Oh, people wouldn't do that. You've never been in a street ministry. The watchman saith, the morning cometh, second advent. And also the night, tribulation, if you will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. The Lord's coming. The tribulation's coming. You better get right. That's the same kind of message I preach today. 
the Lord's coming. You better get right. You better repent. Go ahead and sass me. You're not sassing me. You're sassing God. Look at that. 13 to 17 Arabia. All right. Babylon, this powerful, wicked nation. Edom, Jacob's brother. Arabia, Isaac's brother. Ishmael is, is the Arabians. The burden of Arabia. In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge. O ye traveling companies of Didan. The inhabitants of the land of Tima brought water to him that was thirsty. They prevented, they prevented with their bread him that fled. For they fled from the swords, retreat, from the drawn swords, war, and from the bent bow, the bow and arrows, and the arrows are in the bow, and it, the string is pulled back, and from the grievance of war. Here's a conflict, here's a, a battle about to happen, and they ran. For thus saith the Lord, say it unto me. I feel a sneeze coming. Within a year, according to the years of a hiring, an employee, and all the glory of Kedar, pay attention to Kedar, shall fail. Nations that are against God, nations that are against Israel will fall. God said, I will curse them that curse you. Esau is angry with Israel because Jacob supposedly stole the, the blessing. He didn't steal it. So he did not steal it. He rightfully bought it. He used deception to get it. I mean, God knew for, for a, a, a little pot of beans. And Esau said, you know what? You can have it. Give me some food. And whether Rebecca or Jacob or both them, whether they did or did not deceive their dad, we know they did. But if that plan never came up between Rebecca and Jacob, God would have taken care of Esau another way because that blessing was not Esau. And John writes in his epistle that, you know, Esau sold it. He sought the worldliness. He sought, you know, nothing of God. He didn't care. And it, even his tears weren't his tears of repentance. His tears were, oh, look what I lost. And his attitude was, who cares what I lost? And he's hated Jacob. Ishmael and Arabians hate Jacob. And in Isaac, because God told Abraham, Sarah told Abraham, cast out the bondman and her son. And Abraham was upset, and God said, yeah, do what Sarah said to do. And the Bible says, the authorized King James Bible says, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 tribes. That is the holy chosen seed of Jehovah. Now you got to be careful too because the Muslims, Islam, will proclaim. Now I'm not sure if this is in the Quran. I, I, I'm talking with a Muslim. I'm learning things as he's trying to learn things. But I asked the, the Muslim, I said, let me ask you a question. Genesis 22. Who is the characters of Genesis 22? And, and the guy, listen, he says, listen, my family, we grew up Muslims. He says, I've been Muslim since I was born. I said, well, who is, who is it? He says, it's Abraham or Abram and Ishmael. Not according to Jehovah. Now, Allah may say Ishmael, but Allah has no say. And they're angry with Israel and fight with Israel because they know their prophet is a liar. And they know that God said Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes. 
And they all want that piece of land called Israel. And I've talked to a missionary over there in the Middle East. And he has gone into their public schools and did the mission work of Jesus in the Bible, in the gospel. And he says over there, he told me, he says, when you pull a map down of the Middle East in their schools over there, there is no Israel. Israel, is, I mean, you pull a map down in an American school in the Middle East, and there'll be a little sliver there called Israel. Not on Ishmael's maps. Not on the Middle East maps of the school systems. They don't want is Israel. They don't want to have anything to do with Israel. They don't love Israel. And if you really look at the hot bed of the anger of Israel and Ishmael and Edom, Moab and Ammon are the two sons by the ancestral relationship of Lot and his daughters, and Lot was Abram's nephew. That whole realm of the Middle East is the hotbed of one big family. And how does America try to, America top of everything? Well, you know, we got the story of the Hatfields and McCormick's. Yeah. Who cares? If the Hatfields and McCormick's don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll go off into hell and burn forever. There is more than the Hatfield and McCormick's in the Middle East. There is Israel, God's people. There is Ishmael, the son that was born of, of, of Sarah's uh, handmaid. Cast the bond woman out and her son. There's Edom. And he sold his birthright. He, he went for the world. And the, Edom is a type of the world. Some people say that Edom in the Hebrew, I don't say, is the same name for Rome. It could be quinky dinky. You got Moab. Well, he's angry with his, his family, Israel. Though he's in the family of Israel, Ruth. And God said for the Moabite, he is restricted out of the service of the tabernacle. He's a bastard. And then you got Amon, the other son of Lot, and he's angry. Everybody in the family is angry with Israel. Because they're God's chosen people. So he says, shall diminish for the Lord God of Israel. That's a mighty chosen statement and we look at verse 10 the God of Israel that is totally absolutely rejected amid of the Middle East because if the Middle East and the devil if Israel was not God's people they wouldn't care about them. Israel would have been wiped off the map years and years and years ago. And to say that God is all finished with Israel. Well, what do you do when the Bible says the Lord God of Israel? What do you do when the Bible says the God of Israel? And that God told Abram, I will curse them that curse you. And these nations that are against Israel will be cursed. And as we see, Mr. we see Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. A remark that shows in the book of Revelation, the tribulation period, and that nations will be goat nations when they don't help Israel and will go off into hell because they didn't help Israel. What are you going to do with that? And that when we read this, we look at Edom and we look at Babylon, we look at Arabia, and we look at the time of Jacob's trouble. All the world is going to be against Israel. And on top of it all, at the end of the seven years of Jacob's trouble, the God of Israel. 
the God of Israel, the Lord God of Israel. And I said that the Jehovah Witnesses are a cult. They are against the Bible. They don't believe that Jesus is God. Well, God's going to mount up on a horse, and God's going to have the title King of King and Lord of Lord, and he's going to come for one group of people, the nation of Israel. And then he's going to come in the second advent. He's going to divide the nations into two groups, the sheep nations and the goat nations. And the sheep nations that helped Israel and the goat nations that didn't help Israel. And the sheep nations go into the millennium because of their blessing of Israel. And they get a blessing. And the goat nations that didn't help Israel, they'll be cursed because they curse Israel and they go off into hell. And the hatred of Israel is because God loves them. And it's shown in Joseph. Joseph was hated because his father loved him above all. That's what's going on in the whole Middle East today. 